Hello it's Alex, welcome to my channel, thank you so much for joining me. On this video I've got a couple of garments that I've made that were uh, um, quicker, quicker to make than normal. I'm still very much focusing on trying to keep the sojo alive uh, during the summer while I'm probably spending less time in here than I do in the winter and in the autumn. Um, so things that are kind of fairly quick to do and I've got a brilliant new find um, to kind of keep the sewing inspiration alive that I want to share with you as well. Um, but first off, I'm just going to show you very quickly that I did finish my, if I say self-drafted, it makes it sound very grand, um, my skirt that I had made that yeah, I stupidly made too big. Yeah, I did do what I said I was going to do. I just took a little bit of the excess off the centre front here because with this mega bold pattern, um, I really wanted to make sure that that front was pattern matched. And though I say it myself, I think I've done quite a good job there. Um, I, <laughs> I'm going to insert some photos of me wearing it. I like it, but it's really different to my normal style. Um, even though it's quite a kind of 70s print, it's got a bit of a 50s feel to it. I did put pockets in. Um, and it's very, very full. And I, I really hope I wear it. I think when it brightens up, just wearing this with a t-shirt, like I said, I'm planning to make a Naya t-shirt in one of these colours to match. Wearing it with a t-shirt and sandals, hopefully, will be just the thing, because it's nice and floofy. Hopefully you'll see what I mean with the inserted pictures. Um, and with that in mind, I just wanted to say thanks so much for all the comments on the last video. Um, now, a couple of people suggested with that Naya top from Tammy Handmade that I talked about in that last video, why couldn't you make it out of a woven? And as, I don't know, luck would have it, or coincidentally, the very day that that video came out, Cara from So So Mad had posted a picture on Instagram of a Naya top that she had made out of a viscose, so a woven fabric. So I'm going to take inspiration from Cara and give it a go. I haven't done it yet, but I'm really pleased because one of the things that's great about that top is that it doesn't take a lot of fabric. And I have got some of this Atelier Brunette fabric left from my Sicily slip dress. Oh, yeah, some of it's on the floor now. Um, tell me I'm not the only person that keeps every little bit just in case. Um, but yeah, I think that I have got enough of this that I can squeeze one out of it, I reckon. Anyway, I'm going to give it a go. Um, but if anyone has made one out of a woven, would you let me know in the comments below? Because Cara's looked good. And because it's got quite a wide neckline, I think it will work. Uh, watch this space. I'll keep you posted. Um, don't forget if you're interested in that top, if you go and look at that video, there is a discount code for 15% off. The other plan that I have is that I have got my youngest daughter, so my middle child has is graduating this year. Another summer, another graduation. It was Ruby last year. Um, and we're going to her graduation in two or three weeks time. And obviously, I need a dress. I saw this pattern. It has to be mine. It's, you may have seen it. It's the first ever pattern release from Fabric Godmother, who you may know are a fabric company. Um, it's the Peony dress. And I love it. I think it's going to be a really versatile dress. It has um, quite a fitted, not hmm, fitted, no, but it's not super loose bodice and skirt with a, a flounce at the bottom and a fitted sleeve, couple of different sleeve lengths. And then just in line with where the waist seam is, you get a little flounce on the sleeve. Now, I don't suppose I'm the only person that noticed that this peony dress from Fabric Godmother is very similar to, or let's say inspired by, the dresses from The Vampire's Wife. And 
The Vampire's Wife dresses have been really popular in the last couple of years. They are, to my eye, absolutely beautiful, but way out of my budget. I mean, we're talking hundreds and hundreds of pounds for one of those dresses. So I love the fact that we have got access to this pattern and we can now make our own version that's gonna fit us and it's gonna be in colors or fabric that we like. Yeah, super love that. Um, I don't yet know what fabric I'm gonna use. I've obviously got plenty in my stash. Um, yeah, I think I've sent off to Fabuloso to get the pattern printed. So when it comes back, I'm gonna sit down and see what I've got and try not to go and buy anything new. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so I love the fact that one of the things about sewing is that we can replicate our favourite kind of high-end designs. And that's why I wanted to talk to you about my new find. And it's an app called Readly, whereby you can access loads of magazines and newspapers. And this is in partnership with Readly. I think it's going to be absolutely invaluable for those of us that sew. I have been using it to have a look at a load of the fashion magazines because I've always found them to be a really good source of inspiration. It kind of sparks up your ideas of things that you can sew, especially when you see things, you know, 900 pound dresses and you think, well, I could make that for a fraction. I love it for that. And you've got loads and loads of fashion magazines, including some of the worldwide ones, which is always really interesting. I was looking at Vogue Italy the other day um, and you can look at all the back issues as well. So it's not just the current ones. Um, but yes, yeah, so you've got all the, all the UK ones, but you can do the foreign language ones too. And of course, what's coming next month in August is we'll get all the September issues where they start looking at all the autumn winter trends and all the fashion that's coming for the next season. So if you are somebody that's kind of not able to sew over the summer, or you've kind of lost your sojo a little bit, I've always found the September issue magazines to be brilliant for kind of predicting what the coming trends are gonna be and generally kind of getting those, yeah, creative juices firing again. Um, but needless to say, there are also all the craft magazines as well. So loads of sewing magazines. Um, there's one that I hadn't been aware of before and I don't know how I managed to miss it. Um, because there are always loads of these sewing magazines, aren't there? But this one is called The Pattern Pages, which seems to focus more on the indie patterns. But there's lots of them. Love Sewing is another one that's really good. Yeah, they're absolutely brilliant. So the Pattern Pages one is really good because the free patterns for that they provide, free sewing patterns, are downloadable. So you can download them and then the instructions on how to make the garments are within the magazine. The ones that tend to come with a paper pattern, you're not gonna be able to get that paper pattern, but there are loads of downloadable options as well. And then what I think is great is that, so for somebody like me, I do a little bit of crochet and I keep trying to get into knitting, is that I can now access a bazillion <laughs> crochet and knitting magazines and get going with some of those because they often have free projects in them as well. But also to just read the articles and get myself a little bit more immersed in those, those hobbies because I don't know so much about them. Obviously there's loads of quilting magazines for those of you that quilt. So it's absolutely brilliant. It's all for one subscription fee, but I have a brilliant offer whereby you get two months free subscription and you can cancel at any time. So, you know, you're not tied into anything. Um, the subscription is about the cost of half a meter of good quality fabric. So it's, you know, to have everything in one convenient place on your phone. I actually have mine on my phone and on my iPad. Um, I found it to be absolutely brilliant. But of course, what's really nice is that, so you've got, it has a really nice way of recommending. Once you tell it wh where your interests are, it will recommend magazines to you. Um, so I found it to be really, really easy to use. But what's great is it is to have a look at magazines on those kind of subjects that you're interested in, but you wouldn't necessarily go and buy a magazine on. So I don't know if you know, I've got really into Formula One this year. 
well, last couple of years. And um, I found a really good magazine about the history of Formula One, so I really enjoyed reading that. Would I have necessarily gone and bought it? Probably not. Um, I'm enjoying things like the foodie type ones. You know, uh, Olive magazine is one that I've really enjoyed looking at. Uh, Dave and I are about to do a load of DIY, so we've been enjoying having a look at some of the interior design magazines. And I've really enjoyed some of the kind of more high-end, luxury coffee table type magazines do you know what I mean just for a bit of pure escapism so there's a lot of choice there you also when you have your subscription you get five profiles so if like me you are a family of five each member of the family can have their own profile and look at their own things as I say if you use the link that I've got in the description box you get the two free months and you can cancel at any time so there's yeah nothing to worry about there anyway have a look at the description box for the link. So the other thing that I have done is in the same vein as my last video, I've tried to focus on things that have been quite quick and easy to sew. Now I saw this tank that I am wearing um, on Ruan, the Yorkshire Sew Girl. She made a version of it, pretty plain at the front and pretty much more interesting at the back. It's got a slightly lower back and it's got these pleats. I really, really loved how Ruan's looked and I'm afraid to say I, did I copy her? No, I was inspired by her. Um, so the pattern is from a French pattern company, unpronounceable, I'll put a title. It's called the Faustine or Faustina. Let's call it the Faustine. Um, I really, really like how it's turned out. The instructions are fine, but I had a few niggles. It has a really nice size range, which is great. Um, it goes by bus size, and I think the largest bus size was 48 inches. Um, and the finished garment measurements are provided as well. Uh, but no layers function. I find that really annoying, especially when, because at the back you've got all these brilliant pleats, the markings for those pleats on that pattern piece were really important. And when you're printing out multiple sizes, you've got notches everywhere and it's really hard to tell which is your notch. Um, and I don't know why the layers function isn't there because it'd be so much easier. So that's one little niggle. My other little niggle is a short grain line. What is the point of a short grain line? All that ends up happening as the person using the pattern is you have to go and get a ruler and draw it in because, you know, you can't possibly make sure that your pattern piece is on grain if the grain line isn't following, you know, the majority of the pattern. That's my little niggle there. Um, I do like it but I didn't like the method of construction. I'm sorry I'm being a bit negative. I'm not really negative about it, it's fine, but when you're, it comes with a sleeved option and this sleeveless one. I really like the sleeveless one, but when you're doing a sleeve like this, there's absolutely no reason why you can't use the burrito method to enclose those seams and your neckline seams and have it all looking really beautiful and neat. But for some reason it's constructed, the instructions tell you to construct it in a way that doesn't do that and you end up with this really awkward bit of sewing around this shoulder seam. And it even says on the instructions, if you find this tricky, um, just sew through all the layers but the finish won't be as good. And I don't understand why you wouldn't just suggest to construct it with a burrito. So I have to say, I ignored the instructions and I did it my way. And once I did that, I was very happy with it. I bought this fabric, it's linen, from my local fabric shop from Leon's. And I've actually got enough of it that I can make something else. I really like it. I might make a sort of pair of matching trousers. These are my trusty old sidewinder you can't tell they're black um sidewinder pants from the um, sewing revival i have made these about i mean years ago now and they are brilliant because they've got a flat front and an elasticated waist 
they have seen me through many, many <laughs> size changes. I've gone up and down and up and down. And so then I decided that I have muttered more than once about using the burrito method for sleeveless tanks and dresses. And uh, wouldn't it make sense that I do a little tutorial? So I decided to make a second tank and do that and make the tutorial on the way, which is what I have done. And the second tank, as luck would have it, does have instructions on how to use the burrito method for the side seams, uh, for, for the armholes. And it's the Santorini tank from Itch to Stitch. And I have, while I was constructing it, while I was making it, I did record a tutorial on the way. So in a day or two, I will put that up on YouTube as a separate video. So if you're interested in learning how to do that so that you keep all these seams here, all enclosed with your facing, super nice and neat, no need for top stitching, your facing will stay away, that video will be up and I will put a link in once it's come up on, on YouTube. But this is a, a great little top. The reason I wanted to make this one, um, you might, if you've been following this channel a while, you might know that I used this fabric last year to make top version of the Calvin wrap dress. And this was left over and I was just a tad out the fabric to make the facing. So one of my facing pieces is slightly patched in. Um, but yeah, I really like it because it has these, I don't know if you can see it, but it has princess lines. I mean, it has them at the back, but most importantly at the front, that bit of shaping around the bust. Um, and just to kind of have a slightly more interesting detail than a bog standard tank, it has this really nice button band at the side. And I really like that. And one of the things that's brilliant about itch to stitch is again, I can't remember the size range, but they always have a really good size range, but they have cup sizes. So I think there are, well, there's certainly a number of cup sizes available and it tells you how to work out what cup size you are. So I made mine as a B um, and I'm pretty pleased with the fit, but I really like that. But because you've got these seam lines here, it makes it so much easier to tweak the fit. Obviously don't overlock first or do whatever your seam finish is. Um, but yeah, it just helps so much for fitting. And for those of you that have got bigger busts, having the cup sizes all done for you is an absolute godsend, I'm sure. So um, yeah, there will be a link uh, down, downstairs. <laughs> there will be a link in the description box. It will be an affiliate link, which means I get a tiny percentage of any pattern sales. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really pleased with it. I'm still a little bit scared of this pink color. I have did come to the conclusion that this super bright fuchsia was a color that I could wear, but it does make me a little bit nervous and I'm a little bit nervous about what to wear with it because I'm not wild on pink, you know, a super bright colour with black. I'm not good on that. I'll probably go put my jeans on or something for the pictures. Um, yeah, pink and brown is quite a nice combination, isn't it? I made those brown um, dog gauze pants last week. Oh, right. I just remembered something. The sound quality is not going to be great because I don't have a microphone on here, but I just wanted to say thank you so much to couple of people suggested, when I said on the last video that these ties were too short, they suggested I chop them in half and put some elastic in between them, uh, thread it back in, and that's exactly what I've done. So they're all, yeah, elasticated in the middle. Thank you, it was an absolute lifesaver and took all of about five minutes to do. Anyway, suddenly realized I hadn't mentioned that. <laughs> I like the addition of the button band my buttons are actually red, but I think I just about get away with them. Uh, yeah, it's a really nice pattern. The only thing I would say is that this is a super lightweight linen. And if you do go and look at that tutorial, you'll see that at, at various points when I was pulling through the burrito, through the shoulder seam here, it did go a bit dish raggy. And I have just pressed this and I suspect after about five minutes wear, it's going to look pretty crumpled. So I think wasn't perhaps the best 
um, fabric choice. If I'd used a slightly heavier weight linen or a different, or maybe a linen blend or yeah, just a different fabric choice might have been a bit better. But I really like it. I like the extra bit of shaping that it gives. But again, like with the Naya t-shirt from my last video, both of these are relatively quick and easy makes. And the sort of thing that you can sort of just do half an hour, put it down, come back to it. And I think just a kind of classic top that you're always going to wear, but with a little bit of something, something. Thank you for Ruan for letting me steal your idea. She doesn't know. Or maybe I'll let her know I've stolen her idea. Um, so that's me for today. I will be back very soon. Stand by to see whether this worked as a Naya t-shirt. Um, and please don't forget the Readly offer because I honestly don't think you'd regret it. Um, it will. The link will be in the description box for that two free month subscription and uh, you can cancel at any time. But yeah, let me know how you get on. I'll be back soon. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.